So this talk is the uh, continuation of my last year's talk about intuitionistic logic. Last year I had uh, like a pretty simple example, just two-tier uh, set theory. Here we'll get more, so you'll see. You probably were, uh, everybody heard Paul talking today about logic that is not always Boolean, and like with these examples, right? So I've got this feeling, this walrus feeling, like the time, the time has come. I was waiting for this time, I don't know, like for decades, uh, because like so many years I was, I suddenly figured, huh, ah, database or whatever, like a table, a, stru a structure, a data structure is actually a category. But it never occurred to me that uh, it not only it's, it's a category, every uh, like implementation, every mapping uh, is coming from Grotendieck topos. So I'll be talking about this, never mentioning Grotendieck topos anymore. So let's see what we have. First, let's start with plain sets. What logic do we have there? Like, uh, we used to believe that what we deal with, like in our code, are sets, right? So we have predicates. Predicates, uh, they separate subsets. Well, why do they separate subsets? Because we have true and false. True and false are two things that uh, classify subobjects. An element is either inside or out, so our predicate, the function, returns either true or false. And we have sets, we have elements inside sets, and we have subsets that uh, are parts of the, of the big set. So that the schema, that's the way of thinking that you learned in school probably, and that's how we think of our code all the time, like we write a predicate, we compose predicates, and we think that's the logic that we have. Except that Paul told today, well, it's not exactly that simple. So last year, I was showing this example with two tier sets, a set before and a set after, and a function like transition from yesterday to today. So if we have a set T, with two uh, tiers, T0 and T1, and a subset with two tiers, U0 and U1, right? So we have this transition. And what can happen? An element T0 can go to element T1 and still be outside of U. An element X0 can be outside here and get inside. An element U0 can be inside on tier 0, and so it stays inside in tier 1. Which means we don't have a Boolean logic anymore. We have three alternatives here and two alternatives here. This is a, I'm repeating it from last year's talk. So as a result, our logical values, well, not exactly values, our logical uh, like things, they are also two tier sets, a tier before and tier after. So we have true something that classifies things that are always inside, inside our U. False, which classifies elements that are always outside. And question mark is like halfway there, almost there, that is not here in, uh, time, uh, in time moment zero, but it gets there after. There were examples, so that's how it is, that's the logic. It's, you can call it, uh, it's intuitionistic logic, and you can call it uh, three value or ternary logic, well, ex uh, except that it doesn't contain just values, it can contain half values. So why is it so? Why do we uh, have it like this? This is the bigger picture. If in any, well, okay, so it doesn't render. So if we have, like in general settings, uh, in generalized sets, uh, we have this kind of logic. We have a unit which uh, represents elements in our generalized sets. Omega is a subobject classifier. It uh, represents logic. So in sets, this logic consists of true and false. On bigger occasions, it contains true. And any point in, uh, in logic, well, this is uh, just like a characterized, uh, how do they call it? Uh, function, any point is a function from unit to uh, this logic, right? Corresponds to a partial unit, a subobject of one. 
So what is a partial unit? Let's go back a little bit. If you have, it's something that doesn't belong to unit here, but belongs here. So it's half point. Do we have half points in sets, in regular sets? No, we either have a point or have an empty. That's the smallest, right? But we can have uh, half points, uh, I'll show you later on, even if the logic is Boolean. I'll show. But to get to that, let's start with a picture, like a typical database schema, something like that. So we have a table of humans, or like, a, it's a conceptual uh, schema. So we have a table of humans, we have a table, or you can look at them as a set of humans, a set of pets, bond is something that connects human and pets, so a bond is like a human and a pet, and they live together. Who is like who owns whom? Uh, well, it's questionable. Couples. Well, uh, although I'll call them uh, husband and wife, uh, I'm not like sexist. Whatever, just anything goes. So in this specific case, it shows that a man can be uh, like in a constitute a couple with uh, himself or herself. So that's okay. That's uh, it's just an example. So it's, uh, this is a database uh, schema, and it's a pretty simple database. One of the simplicities is there are no loops, right? So that's, that's intentional. But anyway, so I'll show you the logic for this specific schema, why it's not a Boolean logic, why it's not sets that we are dealing with. But it's probably too complicated. Well, see, first, here's an example. Right? We, ha we have those humans, Mary Jane and Waldo Robinson, those are probably on Friday. And these, like pets, Crafty, Fluffy, Flaubert, uh, parrot, right? Uh, so, and we have these things. They have numbers so that we can uh, specify those mappings. And these are functions, meaning everything here is mapped this way here and this way here. So this is a, a diagram. This is an implement, a specific implementation of the schema except that it's probably too complicated to explain the logic. So let's, well, yeah, this is like more uh, discussions about what's what, I'll get there. So let's kick out uh, couples first and see how it is. So we have just a human and a pet and a relationship like this, but it's still too complicated for the logic. Let's look at the simpler, at an even simpler example. We have a human and a pet and no relationship. So what would be the logic for that? Each uh, component is a set, right? So we have a set of humans cross Cartesian product, uh, or like a pair, a set of humans and a set of pets. So the logic consists of two Booleans, right? A Boolean here, whether our uh, like representative is good or not, and a Boolean here, whether our pet is good or not. So we have... Uh, Describing all these things, describing all these combinations requires just two bits. So two bits meaning uh, we have zero, zero representing false and one, one representing truth. And we also have, so t uh, these are two points, but we also have something that is like halfway there, right? So th they represent half points. So we have a human, a good human, but a uh, bad uh, pet. So, or bad human or good pet. All four combinations, right? So this is still a simple example because we uh, deal with bits all the time, right? So we, you can describe your like, capabilities, properties. So we can say like we have this property, but not this one, this one, and this one. So this is a typical thing where you, when you have uh, deal with Boolean, but those Booleans are not uh, binaries. So it's, it's not exactly a two-valued Boolean. What would be a sub-object classifier? It consists of two tiers, right? So one set here, one set here. And they represent like good human, no, bad human, good human, bad pet, good pet. So when you have a pair, we have four responses, right? So the logic is Boolean, as I already said. So far, it's simple. Now let's add a connection. So when we add a connection, not all combinations are possible. We cannot have something here if we don't have something there, right? So 
It's similar to those two-stage sets, except that we have one function here and one function here. So, so what can we have here? Like in this example, a person can be wrong, or can be, no, can be good or bad. The pet can be uh, wrong, like good or bad. And both can be good, but here we, uh, we don't have it. So it, that it's not a part of our subset, subobject. So the combinations are, here's a variety of combinations. In those, like, in the ends, we have nothing uh, further. We can have true or false, meaning that uh, we are there, a person is good, a person is bad. Here, pet is good, pet is bad. But here we can have five combinations. Bad, uh, bad human, bad pet, sorry. Uh, good pet, bad human. Good human, bad pet. It happens, right? Good human, good pet, still uh, the bond, bond is uh, not good. It's not true. It doesn't belong to our selected uh, subset or subobject, right? And again, it's, everything's good. So if the bond is good, we have to have it good here. Because, well, it's like it. That's how the mapping is. If it belongs to the subset, the result of the function still uh, belongs to the subset. So we don't have any option. So we have five... He, uh, five uh, different uh, values here and two here and two here. And the mapping, the mappings are in parentheses. So like HP, it's not, uh, it's not truth, but it goes to true here and true here. <coughs> <coughs> this is like more literary verbose representation of the relations. So we have a good bond with good human and good pet. Bad bond between good human and good pet. Then good human, bad pet, bad human, good pet, and bad human, bad pet. So logical operations, yeah. And we can define logical operations on this. Uh, conjunction, disjunction, uh, implication, negation. And the operations, fortunately, well, I defined component-wise. Like uh, in each tier, you define how uh, combinations of this what would be a conjunction of good human, bad pet, and bad human, good pet? Well, of course, it will be bad human and bad pet, right? So this is the subobject classifier. And on the top tier, this is rewritten in the sense of uh, what dominates what. So uh, in this <coughs> lattice, well, because it's a lattice, we have uh, as, as a true good bond, then bad bond with good human and good pet, then a good human here, uh, bad pet, bad human, good, uh, good pet, and then bad human, bad pet. So this is the, the whole diagram, and because it's a lattice, well, you can uh, define conjunction and, dis and disjunction through, uh, uh, they call it supremum and inf infimum, right? This is, but before uh, going there, I'll draw the table for that. Let's throw in one more level of complexity. Couple, as you see, we have two functions here. So we have very, very similar logic on this tier, separate from this. So that, like this is a, what's happening here, like this is an example. So what can, what can, hap what can go bad with couples? Both can be bad. One can be good, one can be bad. Both can be good, but still the couple is bad. And then they divorce probably, right? Or everything could be, could be good, and we have five different values, logical values here as well, right here. <coughs> so both bad, wife is good, husband is bad, husband is good, wife is bad, and both are good, and again, and the couple is good. So this logic, and we have this logic. So imagine all the combinations that we can have, right? So if you write your uh, like, uh, query, you can think about all those combinations that can happen. And of course, you can think of it like just good here or bad here. But then uh, you can write, and this, where. Uh, so you're aware if it combines uh, logical 
uh, if it combines predicates for different tiers, well, actually you are dealing with uh, this kind of logic. Because you cannot have like good here, but bad here. Not all combinations are, uh, are possible. Well, everything's allowed, but not everything's possible, right? So, specifically negation. I'll show you the other operations as well. Or maybe we should go to the other operations. So it couples here. You remember the, that notation, right? Like, all bad, wife is good, husband is good, both are good, and everything's good. And this is the con uh, conjunction. So if we have good, hu uh, good husband and good wife, and husband is good, so the conjunction would be just this, right? So false kills everything. Truth is as well with uh, a neutral element for conjunction. And this, we take this minimization, right? The same with disjunction, truth is uh, like, truth dominates everything, so we have this. And false is neutral element for disjunction. And the rest is kind of trivial, right? I'm not drawing, uh, I'm not drawing implication here because implication kind of requires some mm, like more calculation than usual. But uh, negation is this. So if everything's true, the negation of it is false. If we have both husband and wife good, its negation is both are bad. So negation of, uh, no, that's wrong. Okay, ignore this table. This is the right table. <laughs> so here's the right table. So negation, I have this like negation and second negation. So double negation. We have truth, uh, negation is false, and negation is truth. Uh, husband and wife, negation is uh, false, negation of uh, false is truth. So double negation will be full truth. So you see in this case, double negation uh, is not identity. It's not Boolean logic, and if it were Boolean logic, we would have exactly two to the power of n at each tier. So just husband, uh, negation is wife, uh, negation again is husband, and like this. Same here, but just human and pet, right? So like human, not human is, uh, well, both uh, like not human and pet is false, and apply not again is true. And here's the definition of negation, actually. How did I calculate it? I calculated it like this. We take x. What would be a negation? It's the biggest value that doesn't intersect with, uh, with x. So that's why negation of HP is uh, false. What's the biggest value that doesn't uh, intersect with HP? Not this one, not this one, not this one, not this one. So only this, right? Doesn't intersect meaning intersection is false. So that's how it is. That's how I calculated it. Like if you take H, negation, uh, intersection with P would be uh, false here, false here. So okay. So. This table is wrong, I'll fix it. So we have two tiers where negation, uh, where double negation simplifies the whole system. So the logic, uh, the total logic is uh, not Boolean and we, we have to deal with it, but it's still intuitionistic logic. So uh, the rest of the of, uh, intuitionistic rules, they apply, you can build uh, you can build implication, and actually negation can be built from implication. It's uh, also built something like this. Negation is an implication of false, of course. And then you can introduce quantifiers. Everything, it's pretty powerful logic. Except that the example here is a pretty simple example. It's a, uh, the diagram goes one way, no loops. And there's a reason for that. Look at this. It's a, like a typical, uh, it's like from some book, thing and becomes, or rather like relates, whatever. That was a popular database uh, design like about 20 years ago, thing and relation. So, well, but see, we have this error, but it's misleading, right? It's just one error, but what if the thing becomes something and then becomes something else and then becomes something else, right? So this is the right picture. This becomes, grows, 
uh, indefinitely. Well, of course, in real in real life, it can stop that uh, growth, right? But but we don't know. Well, maybe because real life databases are finite, mm, potentially infinite, but finite at least uh, like up to uh, today. So this is, would be the diagram of arrows. T becomes T becomes T, and it can never stop, right? So how do we classify? What do we say about like whether our point becomes good? It can, be, it can be good right away at moment zero. It can become on the next step. It can become on step two forever, right? Like at any step. Or it can never become. So it, this infinity means we can wait forever and it doesn't become good. So these are the values, the logical values. And these logical values mean uh, like we have zero as true, infinity and false, and all the range of numbers between. And of course, conjunction would be maximum. Like if we, if we have two guys, one becomes uh, like good at stage N and the other one becomes good at stage M, when do they both become good? At stage maximum of, of N, uh, an M, right? So that's uh, conjunction. Disjunction is of course uh, minimum. And you can figure out, so what's uh, negation? The negation of any non-infinity is infinity. Never, no, like not any, at any moment. A negation of infinity is this. So negation would uh, kill all this variety of uh, logic and produce just a two-valued logic, true or false. So that's the trick of double, uh, no, I mean, double negation. But the result of negation is still either zero or infinity. So this is a typical example, and we can deal with this. But what do we do with this, with real life? Like you open any database, right? We have this like company, a person like belongs to a company, a company belongs to a person. Does that person belong to that company? Not always. There can be like very weird relationships. And we can have an address, and an address belongs to a company, or address, or the person belongs to that address, and we can also have things that belong to people, or people somehow belong to things. Well, maybe not today, but soon. So, what's the logic of this? Yeah, there is a logic, except that it's really, really hard to describe the whole uh, variety of things. We can go around and see eventually, like, does this person uh, like belong to the list of goods? No, but that person's company. There are people, some good people in that person's company. Or at, that, at this address, there are some good people. Or like in that country where the person lives, there are still some good people or whatever, right? So we can build a huge logic and to deal with it is hard. What would be an easier way to deal with it? Split it a little bit. like as to have as little relations, especially like back and forth relations. And have uh, the databases, well, this is, uh, I know, this is naive. This is the categorist's advice to database designers. Like, guys, split your databases. Don't have those like multiplicity of connection because if you have your logic is weird. Well, every time you write a stored procedure, you get that, yeah, but what if, and so on. And, to avoid it, you have to split the logic so you'll have a combination, like in the very beginning, right? You'll have a Cartesian product. Even if you have this, this is uh, pretty simple, although it's not Boolean, right? And this is totally very not simple. But this is a fact of life, maybe in real life. Somehow human beings tend to believe that we have like, in this table we have Boolean, in this table we have Boolean, in this table uh, we have Boolean. And there is a database admin that tries to deal with this hell because no, but, but how come we don't have this in our report? Well, because in the relation, that person is in relation with this admin and this admin is not included because this who, uh, who goes to the report is specified in that table. Well, that's what I'm dealing with right now with, uh, with my colleagues. So they're come, uh, asking me, how come this guy never gets reported since like January 19th. Well, because something had changed, like whatever. This also happens in the code, but well, code is a different story. This is totally static, right? 
Dyna uh, what makes it dynamic is a uh, weird, weird logic. And I think I showed how come. I never mentioned uh, constraints. That would be the topic of next year's talk, because constraints introduce topology, Grothendieck topology, in these uh, topuses of pre -sheaves. Because what scientifically uh, we're dealing with, they are called pre -sheaves. So here are links to read. So this is uh, just my talk from uh, last year. I go into deeper details regarding this logic and that logic and how it's, where it's coming from. This uh, actually is ded dedicates a lot of pages to database structures and how they are related to categories and how they are categories and how can we map them into sets and basically deal with diagrams. And this is the biggest book, the main book, published in 1976, I guess. And now you can buy one like for 26 bucks at Amazon. Thank God, before it was like, I don't know, 160, something like that. Uh, and this is the right book for if you want to learn topuses. There is also a bigger book like this. Uh, it's called uh, whatever, like Elephant. No, El it's called Elephant Book. And it covers everything, but well, nobody read it. So this is a smaller book. There's another book called uh, by Goldblatt. Uh, it's called about topos logic. Mm, I can share my opinion. That book is a little bit wrong. Well, because it's all based on set theory and topuses are not based on set theory. So if we go back there, we think we deal with sets here, right? But we can also deal with different kinds of sets. If, uh, like you hear from mathematicians, that like math is actually based on set theory, right? You can always ask, which one? And they will say, well, set theory, right? So you can ask uh, Gödel Bernays or Zermelo Frenkel. Zermelo Frenkel with uh, axiom of choice or without axiom of, cho of, cho axiom of choice. Uh, with a continuum hypothesis or not, because there is no finite set of axioms, thanks, uh, thanks to Gödel. And basically, there can be a set theory with, uh, that only deals with finite sets. That's a pretty legitimate set theory, except that sets are finite. And you can have finite here, infinite here. And you can build this logic that has no underlying uh, common set theory. So that's why, that's why that book that I don't mention is, is misleading. So don't read it. Rather read this one, <laughs> maybe after this one. So, thank you. Questions? Yeah. Can you maybe show how uh, the database schema you know, forms a category? Oh, yeah. Well, see, I would not say data database schema forms a category. I can say we can look at it at a, as a category. So see, this is a conceptual diagram, right? So we have uh, here, uh, an entity here, an entity here, an entity here. And we have mappings, right? Like uh, there's something like select here uh, that Daniel wrote. So, ah, here's an example. So in this table, we have Mary Jane, maybe like some more data about the humans. Every column is actually a mapping, like Mary Jane is a mapping to strings, right? Uh, here, pets. Names are mappings of, uh, from table to strings. These things are identifiers, so they basically are used for referring these entities. So here, each row uh, has an identifier which, is, uh, which we need for choosing the row, right? So it's like it's technical. But we also have two... Uh, foreign keys, one key uh, point to this one, and the other keys point to this one. And these foreign keys constitute functions. So constitute uh, morphism, arrows. This one is, uh, gives us an arrow, this arrow, from uh, bonds to humans. This column constitutes an arrow from bonds to pets. So every time you have, in a table, if you have a, uh, a uh, foreign, uh, foreign key, 
It means it's a function, right? So uh, there is like one specific case. What if the foreign key is null? Well, then it's a partial function. And nobody said that uh, they should be like set theory functions, right? So partials are okay. But I'm, I'm not covering that. So, okay, suppose we have functions all the time. So that's what it is, right? Uh, here, this column is a function that is like the first uh, member of couple, uh, of couple, and this one means the function that uh, can be called the second member of couple. So that's it, these are the two functions. So these arrows just uh, represent that stuff. So again? So if, if foreign key relationships are arrows and the database is a category, is there a way that you can uh, search that those arrows compose? Well, yeah. We do compose in the database, right? So imagine we have table A, table B, and table C. And there's a foreign key, right? So we compose uh, in your SQL statement, you can easily compose, compose using where. Select where. Yeah, I probably should have added this, like where gives us composition. Of course, identity, uh, identities are not included here, but they're so trivial that we can like ignore. So we can write like compose identity with a function where x equals x, right? So we can write that, but that's trivial. Any, any more questions? Yeah, no? Okay. So thank you.